Now that I have my terminals behaving properly, it's time we continued on with the tutorial. So let's get baggage handling up and running. Let's start with the research. Okay, we've finished the research. Now it's time to start actually building out our baggage solution. The first step in the tutorial is to place a baggage bay. Now, I am actually going to require two of these, not just one. And the reason for that is that each can handle 12 units worth of baggage. A small flight uses one unit, a large flight uses two, and a medium flight uses one and a half. Therefore, I need one to cover my nine small flights and another to cover my six and later on more medium flights. Eventually I'll need three and probably four of these. Now they must be placed inside a terminal building and it must be a secure zone. It's not liking it right now because I haven't put in enough secure zone there, I missed a line. So let's fix that. This is supposed to be secure. So is this. And you'll notice that I've removed the walls from here. That's because, and I expect it will tell me this in a moment, I need to draw in service road to cover all these markers. So I'm gonna jump ahead and do that while it's waiting to be constructed. Um, service road, concrete, like so. Now it's often sensible to fill in this square as well because the baggage trucks will often want to go from dropping off bags on one side to picking up bags on the other and it's best to not have them driving all the way out onto your main thoroughfare. So that's the first one. The second one is going to be in this room here. So back to baggage, select the baggage bay. You can see I've left a sort of an awkward angle here so the road's going to have to come in and then take a hard right and get down there. And because this one's not leaving the building, I don't mind the fact that there's going to be a gap between these two points. I don't have to have a line here. They can go out and around without interfering with this traffic. All right, let's get that built. Okay, with both of those now constructed, I need to assign check-in desks to work with each of these. So let's multi-select these, click one, hold down shift, try to collect the uh, desks themselves, not the people on them. And then click this button to assign a baggage bay. This one goes to my small baggage bay. Do the same thing for these. You can't select the ones that are just planned at the moment. Assign there. Now we also need to connect them via baggage belts. And this is where things will get rather tricky in terms of trying to work with a single floor. I mentioned some time ago that I was researching multi-floor operations so that I could build underground or above ground. I'm almost guaranteed to have to do that here. In fact, I am guaranteed to have to do that here because there's no way to get from this room over to here without interfering with passengers or vehicles. Now, conveyor belts are in this section. There's flat, down and up. So we'll go, go with flat first and notice that it has a direction. I'm going to run all of that along the back wall here. 
and that means I'm going to have to move my um, aircraft notification system. That is not the right word. Okay, let's move that to here. Okay, I'm going to unassign the desks for the moment. Just doing that because I don't want these desks to be non-functional while I'm still constructing everything. So construct first and then associate the desks to each package bay. It's worth paying very close attention to your conveyor belts when you're drawing them because you can't just change the direction without bulldozing them first. And you can see here, something's gone wrong. Even though I said move up, these ones are now pointing down. So I need to undo those and then draw them in again. Okay, at the moment, that's as far as the tutorial really wants me to go. This room is reserved for a future stage when we start worrying about baggage security. But for the moment, we'll just draw it in like so. Again, I want this to go down. Notice there's a little green triangle indicating the direction that the baggage comes in. Put that there, page down to see the lower view and you'll see there is or will be a little green triangle heading out this way. So zoom in so you can see what you're doing, move that across to about there and figure out where we need to come in. Right, this side is for departures, this side is for arrivals. So if we go select our elevators we want to go down on the arrival side and up will be there go under the ground place it there go up and you can see when you're in the right mode you can see that moving arrow pointing into this baggage bay now we need to connect those to the existing loop so select this get the arrows the right way again and I always always recommend going one square extra because of how finicky conveyor belts can be so rather than just trying to come up this column here I left an extra gap so that I was definitely getting the right direction when I connected now I want this room here to be the baggage collection room for all my small flights. I obviously can't just cross through here without going up or down some floors, but I can go all the way around. And on this occasion, I'm just going to go around. So again, zoom in, check your directions, move out there. You only need one tile of space. And it's approximately here, so turn that way, draw it across here, beautiful. Now to, convey, uh, to construct the carousel we just essentially need a loop in this room going around in circles. This room is much larger than it needs to be, but hey I had the room, <laughs> it's going to get used. So if we look down, sorry, down, not up, we need to work out exactly where we want this to come out. All right. So I want that square there, and then I want an elevator going up there so that the bags will get thrown onto this conveyor belt here. Now beware, passengers will walk all the way over the conveyor belts it's very 
ugly when you're looking at it, but it doesn't bother the game. Ah, drag out a baggage claim area. Okay, I misread that. You do need to actually define the room. So, baggage claim area. Let's make this entire room into baggage claim. And I think that will tick over when the belt is actually constructed. While we're waiting for that, I also need to build my baggage belts for the medium flights. I'm going to make them much smaller, but there will be multiple um, baggage claim areas in this one room. I will set one here and one here. because gate B is eventually going to end up with 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, possibly 12 um, stands, and that will be too much for one baggage bay. So, let's get these put in. And you can make these any shape you want, really. I'm going to draw it as a simple rectangle on this occasion. And you can copy and paste it, of course. Put it there. Beware if you're copying and pasting, you don't want to really include the elevators. The copy and paste will mess those up, <laughs> almost guaranteed. Now this one, being so close to that room, doesn't necessarily need to go underground. If I'm careful, I can draw out my conveyor belt in such a way that it simply comes along here. Oops, try that again that way and that way now at the moment it should be very obvious to you that I've only connected this one and not the bottom one I don't need the bottom one yet I've just drawn it in early and I don't currently have a way for the system to know if a bag should go to section A or section B that's a bit of research we have to get further on. So if you look here, I've got baggage security one and tilt trays. I'm going to start the tilt tray research now just to get it going. But let's have a look and see if that's even in the tutorial. No, it is not. So as I was saying, I'm going to start the tilt tray research now because I know I'm going to need it and the tutorial does not cover it. What a tilt tray does is very simply say this bag is tagged with this label therefore it needs to go to baggage claim 1 or baggage claim 2 and will redirect the bags one way or the other. So to actually implement that I'll need to remove this square here and redraw it with a tilt tray. And I'm just going to leave a gap for the moment. And note that you cannot place um, conveyor belt outside, but you can place it underground outside. Now to move on with our tutorial, we must open this room and connect it to a baggage base. This one is connected to that one, and this one here will be connected to 
that one, as will this bottom one. Actually, no, no, the bottom one won't. Uh, okay, forget everything I said about tilt trace. <laughs> God. All right. This one's not connected yet because it's going to need a separate baggage bay and that will likely be coming out from underground. So I'm just going to remove that segment for now. Connect a stand to the baggage bay. Okay. Baggage bays have to be connected to the baggage claim area, stands, and checking desks. So let's get our stands now. And assign them to there. Notice how, despite the fact I selected all nine of these stands, only two of them have actually successfully assigned. You can't assign a baggage bay while there's a flight sitting there. This makes trying to set up this process quite tricky and time consuming. I'm effectively going to have to watch and wait for each stand to be empty and assign it as the planes leave. We've built our bays, we've assigned our baggage claim area and connected it. We've connected the stands. We also need to note how many uh, ramp agents are assigned to each. For this many small flights, I don't need two ramp agents per side, one will do. For this many medium flights, two is actually appropriate. We need to purchase <laughs> two baggage trucks. Well, I'm gonna need a lot more than that. Let's go to baggage. They come in different sizes and um, roofless or with a roof. The roof doesn't seem to make any actual difference. It just um, <laughs> actually costs less, which is rather interesting. You'd think maybe it would cost more. The small ones are absolutely fine for most of your needs. The large ones are for large planes. So I'm going to order, um, I'm actually going to order one per stand on this occasion. So eight small and eventually six medium. And like before, anytime I purchase vehicles, I have this switched off and I have to watch them as they arrive so they get assigned to the right locations. And by the way, my world entrance terminal is over here now and is set up to be entrance only so that I have one way traffic. Okay, here they come. One. And these I'm going to assign to individual stands. Before we move on, let's actually demonstrate this problem here. Currently, this baggage bay says it's not able to get a service vehicle to the job site. And now there are coordinates shown when I click on that red flag. Position 248, 200, cannot reach 232184. 248, 200 is somewhere in the region of here. That was 248, 216, but close enough. And the other square it's talking about is actually about here. So 248, 216, 232, 184. 248, 216, 232, 184. Yeah, I'm gonna draw that in. This should not be required, but that seems to be what it's complaining about. My point is not so much what's going on in this instance, but how to analyze these problems. 
this one is very clearly showing me where the problem is or where it thinks the problem is so I'm able to use the path analyzing tools to try to actually identify what's going on so this square which I can't select yet because it hasn't been built is 228184 this is 232184 okay now it would appear drawing in that one little square of road has resolved the problem that's very puzzling okay since I seem to have resolved the strange problem I had with this baggage bay I can now return to the actual tutorial and switch on baggage handling service like I said earlier Now we just have to wait for it to actually run, so let's keep a very close eye on what's going on. These planes are already present, so they won't have requested baggage handling. Any that arrives next will. So we'll keep an eye out for the first one to actually request unloading or loading of baggage. see this numbers going up here this is gate A2 so if we jump down to A2 we can see we've got baggage on our little cart there would have been a ramp agent here somewhere doing the onloading and offloading but it looks like they've just finished unloading yep so we'll follow this cart drives into the baggage bay They offload the bags and then it will drive around ready to collect or not. Okay, it's returning to its stand already. Now it's possible that baggage hasn't been ah there we go. Baggage loading was not requested. So we'll go back to keeping an eye on our flights and wait for here we go. Gate A6 has requested baggage handling, so if we go to this one, it's already unloaded. Let's find our little cart. I believe it's this one. Yep. Now there could be two reasons for the baggage handling not being requested. It could be that no passengers wanted to put bags on the flight, or it could have been simply that the servers hadn't been enabled when that flight was landing, so it wasn't included. People had already checked in without bags. Okay, so far so good. You can see our ramp agent collecting the bags and putting them onto the plane. And job's done. So the light has turned green and then we just wait for people to board I'm confident that that plane is going to be handled correctly so I'll now keep an eye on the flight monitor and I suggest you do the same when you first enable baggage handling because this is the easiest way to keep an eye on all of your stands at once and spot any problems coming up I'm a little concerned that this one hasn't turned green yet, so let's go to gate B3 and see if we can work out what's happening. Where is your baggage cart? Is it this one? I want the cart, not the bay, thank you. Yep, yeah, so he's in the middle of loading. It's taking its time. Ah, also switch on your baggage claim rooms. This one I switched on earlier, this one I forgot. So now that it's on, our passengers should be able to collect their bags. Ah, here we go. Now B3 truck is moving. 
wait for him to go underground and come back up. Yep, we can definitely see people collecting their bags now. Here comes their little cart going to gate B3. So, people have already boarded. That's a worrying sign. You really want bags to be done before boarding or at the same time. The fact that it's taken this long suggests that something is going too slow in the baggage handling process. Now that could be simply the distance they have to drive, or it could be that loading is not fast enough. I'm going to pump this up to three agents per side in the hopes that that will resolve my issue. I'll monitor that between episodes so that we can get on to baggage security.